All right, give it to me. The following contains offensive language and spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Boom. Oh, shit. Are you doing Roger and Zap? Can't do that. You can't do that. That's, that takes me back. That takes me back. You can't do that. That's the one thing you can't. That's the one thing you can't do. To the, to the house. house. <laughs> now we can't do the show now. I'm, I'm done. Like, good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the comic book bullies, nursery bully. I'm your host, Lee Ray, aka I stayed into the eclipse and I didn't get any damn superpowers. Uh, with my co-host. Damn it. Yeah, this is Eli, aka Jay Daniels is my final girl. Who is Jay Daniels? Porn star? Uh no. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's that book I, I just I was re, I was reading a book with no pictures this week. I'm the thinking slasher, of Stormy Daniels. Sla- okay, you're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Okay. <laughs> and then we can segue right into the X-Men. Stormy Storm. <laughs> Storm Stormy Daniel, yeah. <laughs> Porn Storm. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh oh, and like I said, also to our third host, the AI. Because let's be honest with you, eventually they're going to just run the show by yourself. Yeah, like they give me so many options where I can just actually click and I can pick a title. I can pick a thumbnail. Eventually it's going to pick a podcast. Like, what do you want this podcast to be? Just do it. And we're going to be sleeping. Yeah. We, just, and just, yeah, and, 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 and they'll do all the talking for us. So yeah, we welcome our... Yeah, they they, they yeah. already got all our data. They're going to have like uh, <laughs> digital clones of us. Yeah. We like Max Headroom and shit. And, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're one step away. We're one step away from it. Yes. Uh, we, we give thanks to our overlords, the AI. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well embrace it now. Uh, <laughs> damn it. That's what I should have did. Anyway. All right. So before we get into some heavy stuff, we're going to get to, well, I'm going to get to some heavy stuff. Eli said he's out of this. So let's get into some light stuff first. Like I said, Eli, Monday was a thing that everybody uh, gathered around and had fun with. The Eclipse, you know. And, oh, I and, couldn't because it was fucking raining here. Oh, everybody <laughs> but Eli. <laughs> everybody else yeah. in New York was like barbecuing and shit. Like, why are you barbecuing doing a, a eclipse? Like, why is this a, a social event? It's just stick yeah. the ass outside and say, but here's the thing, Eli. I got you because I stepped outside and took a picture of the eclipse. Did you yeah. look right at it? I did look right <laughs> at it because they told me I was going to get superpowers if I stared into the eclipse and I didn't get shit. Anyway, or I don't think I did. What, maybe, maybe, what if you maybe, got a maybe. shitty superpower though? Yeah, yeah, like a beak <laughs> or some shit. I don't know. Like <laughs> Web toes or some shit. Like nothing cool, like you know, omega level. Uh anyway, here, here's what we have. Okay. So, like I said, I stepped outside with my iPhone because we still oh, got to put my glasses on. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, is yeah. this on time lapse? You got no, on time lapse? No, that's, or re- no? that's real time. Okay. Why was it moving? I have no idea. Like, why is it moving so fast? And then it just went away. Boom. Maybe you were floating, man. Maybe you did get superpowers. <laughs> Maybe I did get superpowers. I was like right there with it, you know. So I don't know. But that was, I mean, just in my honest opinion from watching it, I thought that was pretty damn cool. It's like, this is cool shit. Cause I just walked outside because, you know, it got dark and stuff. So I'm like, huh, let's see what's going on. So yeah, I thought it. So anybody got a chance to see the eclipse is cool. Like I said, where I stayed at, I didn't get the full eclipse. I think I got 80% eclipse like that. But, you know, 80% is. Doable. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was cloudy here. We it set, last time too. The last the uh, the one like five years ago or whatever it was. I, I remember that, that one. Yeah, that that one it was it was cloudy here too. Then so <laughs> <laughs> you can't catch a break. <laughs> I've seen some lunar. I've seen a few lunar eclipses in my day, but you know, uh, yeah. So. And, and the blood moon. I, I wish I could take a picture. But next next blood moon, I'm taking a picture. Well, up here because I'm in the north. Like I we have. I must say M- Minnesota. Like or at least. In my area, we get some pretty spectacular moon rises where the moon is like gigantic in the sky and red and all kinds of colors and shit. So that is pretty cool. And that happens almost every night, you know. And y'all don't hear like wolves howling and shit whenever that happens. (laughs) And I did get to see the northern lights like last year, you know, up here. So that that was pretty cool. (laughs) So yeah, like I said, we we talk about all this fantastical shit and all this fictional shit when real awesome shit is happening around us all the time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta, gotta step gotta, outside and, and touch grass. Yeah, use the forest, man. Yeah, the it's, it's, it's all around us. <laughs> it, it it binds us. It goes yeah. through us. <laughs> or whatever sexual shit Yoda was saying. But anyway, oh, uh, <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next thing. Let's talk about this. Let's say rest in 
to uh, Orenthal James Simpson. Yes, let's talk about it briefly. Uh, he passed this week. I didn't know he had prostate cancer. It was a thing. I guess he kept it to himself. That's it. Let's just talk about some things that he did. Like I said, he played in the NFL. Uh, don't ask where he played college. I'm not that deep into it. I read comics. I don't watch sports. <laughs> so anyway, I do know from what I read from Wiki that he still holds the single se season average record of yards in a season. So that's pretty cool. Uh, he was the first mm -hmm. one to do 2,000 yards in a season. Pretty cool. Uh, he was a uh, announcer, well, a commentator for NFL Monday Night Football or something, I guess. Uh, yeah, what else did he do? Oh, he was a sports person. He was loving. You know what? A thing about OJ, what I realized, Eli, before, like mm -hmm. I said, a lot of people only know him for one thing. But before he got into all that bullshit, you could almost say that he was like Will Smith before Will Smith. You know, basically. Okay, yeah, that say, that tracks. Yeah, it tracks. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. Okay, he's he's the one black guy that every white person likes until they don't. <laughs> he was just the poster child for that. He was just there, you know. So yeah, so when you think OJ, because let's let's go a little bit deeper for those who don't know about OJ before all that bullshit happened. He was in the running for Terminator. I know you know about this, Eli. I heard about that, yeah. Okay. But that. the reason he lost to Arnold Schwarzenegger was because they didn't believe he was convincing as a killer. That's what they too, said. I don't know if that's true or not, nice. but, but that's what they, they said. He was too nice, but that's what they said about that. But even though he wasn't in that, he was in other movies. Like I said, he was in the underrated, severely um, underrated Naked Gun trilogy. I recently watched that shit like, like a year or two ago. Yeah. And I was still laughing my ass off. It's maybe because I'm old. Still, yeah. yeah, maybe because I'm old or whatever, but I was still laughing my ass off. And, and the thing is, I'm scared to watch it again because I don't know if it holds up. All I know is that when I watched it, it came out, it was it, I was laughing my ass off. No, there, there was there was some scenes that still hold up that I was just rolling. Okay. Like I said, that is our recommendation. Though. I, I'm, watch the whole trilogy. Watch the whole trilogy. Naked Gun trilogy. Nice beaver. Just had it stuffed. <laughs> just had it stuffed. <laughs> Oh yeah, and what is that? Like I said, he was in all of them. Nordberg or whatever his name was. Matter of fact, yeah, this, is the first time, this is the first time I've ever heard of OJ Simpson from this movie. I didn't know who he was. I just think that like, he was a big deal. OJ Simpson was doing a movie. I'm like who's OJ Simpson? Okay, that's the thing. So he was a big deal right there. They thought this was going to be his break in Hollywood, and it might have been until the all I'm gonna say. You know, mm -hmm. let, let, let's just briefly talk about that. Now, now, look, whether you believe it or don't believe it or think he did it or think eh, you know i'm not gonna get into it have it what you will uh eli I'm, I'm sure you have strong opinions on it but whatever you want to believe is whatever you want to believe you know i'm not gonna get into it point is the trial changed america it really did it was a big trial people don't understand how big this trial was eli this trial invented the kardashians yeah and yeah and like, like, like almost reality TV and reality shit. Like, TV. It was like our first step in reality. TV. Yeah. Like it was a so <clears throat> it was a thing that we just could not get away from. We could not escape. It was just everywhere. Matter of fact, it was, I, it, I didn't it, follow yeah. it, but I always heard about what was happening. OK, do you at least remember the dancing Edos? I remember Judge Ito. Yes. But do you remember the dancing Edos? I do. Yeah, yeah, I remember all that shit. Yeah, yeah I haven't it, thought about that. In, like, I, I forgot he even existed until you just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, until I just said that. <laughs> because everybody from the trial became a celebrity: Johnny Cochran, Robert Kardashian, Judge Edo, uh, Marsha Thompson. Uh, what was the, what was the black dude name? Chris. Chris Marsha Chris Clark. Clark. Who did I say? Marsha Thompson. Thompson. Oh, she's she's a local news person here. Marsha Marsha oh. Clark. Marsha Clark. What's yeah. Name? Yeah, Marsha yeah. Clark. Okay, Christopher Darton. Everybody remember that? all of these names are like famous to people, but they just did this one thing and that was it. And, it, and the thing about and this the crowd, the yeah. only reason why I know who Marsha Clark is because okay. I was watching an Andrew Dice Clay comedy special. Yeah, Andrew <laughs> Dice Clay, <laughs> and he was talking about doing things while she was on TV watching the. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I laugh at Andrew Dice Clay. He's funny to me. <laughs> but that's like that's how big this like people do not understand. If you weren't there at the time, you will never know how big this thing was. I was watching the NBA playoffs. I remember now. Maybe I'm miscorrected. I remember the Houston Rockets versus the Phoenix Suns. It was in the playoffs. I think it was Game Seven. I didn't know what was going on, and boom, OJ dumbass in his white Bronco just interrupted the fucking game, so I couldn't watch it in live TV to know what was going on. Oh. Uh, and yeah, he just yeah, drug everybody true. down there. So and and pretty much from then on, they were showing it twenty four seven. If they weren't showing the trial, 
they were talking about it. They were analyzing. They were discussing it. It was it gripped everybody. Yes, it invented reality TV. It invented the Kardashians. It invented the E Channel. Uh, and invented celebrity like gossip. Really was because we weren't really in the like celebrities' backstories like that. Celebrities were a thing, and that was it. We didn't know what celebrities did behind the scenes. So that's why when OJ got convicted of whatever it was, or you know, accused of whatever it was, it was so shocking. It's like I said, he was Will Smith before Will Smith. So finding out that you know he may or may not have killed two people, we're like, what? You know, OJ yeah. or Renthal? You know, but that's all I got. Like I said, rest in whatever. I'm sure he's looking up at us, smiling, prayers down for <laughs> Orenthal. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I know you want to talk about something you last, so let's go ahead and address what you got going on. So, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'd like to say, yes, good journey to Jeffrey Varagi. He is that indigenous comic book artist who... Um, Hold up. I got you. I got you. Let me throw some 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 art. Okay. Yeah, he did, a, he did a lot of covers for Marvel, IDW, mm -hmm. Boom, Dynamite. Um, and he was getting some... He was getting a lot of traction in the last few years. Um, Remember that uh, indigenous, the Marvel voices, indigenous voices or whatever that came mm -hmm. out a few years yeah, ago? Yeah, I was saying. It, he, it looked familiar, yeah. Yeah, he did all the variant covers. I got all those variant covers, um, hoping to get, I would see him at a con one day, but sadly, ain't going to get that chance. Um, he passed away this weekend. Uh, complications from lupus. So he's been in the hospital for the past few years. Okay. In now, and out is, of coma. Is this something you knew about, or yes, because okay. his wife, his wife, kept, I followed him on, you know, Facebook, and his wife would give a, you know, update, you know, give a, give everybody updates on what was going on. I mean, he was going through kidney failures, uh, you know, pneumonia, in and out of comas for the past few years, mm -hmm. um, and I guess he just couldn't. You know, lot. You know, just never got, never recovered. So he passed away this weekend. Um, sad news for the indigenous geek community, indigenous nerd community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like you made uh, he, that up. I feel like you coined that. I, I did not. I you did, did not. not. Okay, okay. I was because if not, you should, you should take credit for that. Indigenous nerd. No, I said. Yeah. Well, remember, I did he geek like savs. Just a quarter anytime. Yeah. Does that. I, I tried. I thought Geek Savs was going to take off. It did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he he was he was he was getting some traction. He was getting like legitimate work. He was uh, what, he was a what, what tribe was he from? The Pacific Northwest, up in Washington, mm -hmm. Washington State, uh, Snoqualmie or something like that. Um, but anyways, he incorporated that art style his tribal art style into, you know, pop culture. I mean, if you, you know, the, those Marvel heroes, they look like they were drawn in that, that line work that you see in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. you know? So he had a very distinctive style. His work was like, uh, like got featured in the Smithsonian museum. So he was making, he was, you know, getting a big name for himself. And sadly he uh, passed away. So good journey to Jeffrey Varegi. So thanks, thanks. Okay, moving on. To the next part of the podcast, like I said, now we're going to talk about what we came to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about episode five that everybody is talking about. This is this is a big deal. This is a big deal. What's going on right now? This episode five of X Men ninety seven. Now, Eli, before we now you saying you didn't see it, right? I did not see it yet. No, I'm behind. I was reading a book with no pictures this week. So yeah, I'm a behind on some things. So <laughs> while while we were watching cartoons, Eli was <laughs> culturing himself. You know, <laughs> improving himself. Okay, cool. Now, yeah, was, reading about reading about Jay Daniels. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not a porn star, but yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, did, did you hear anything about this episode? I, I've been hearing the buzz. I hear it's yes, I heard that it's a big thing and mm -hmm. people are freaking out, and yeah. you know, the ex geeks are like going nuts and mm -hmm. some big shit happened. And I hear I hear there's some casualties. So that's that's what happened. Go ahead and spoil it. Okay, like I said, it. this is X Men <laughs> Red Wedding. Basically, if you want to go there, I didn't even watch that show, but I just it just permeated pop culture. I get that. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> Good, because I don't get it. I just saw it on Twitter. I was like, I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna just say it anyway. Anyway, here's the thing about this episode. Now, Eli, you know we like live in this bubble, right? This podcast is pretty much a bubble of just nerd, dumb, indigy nerd and blurred shit, whatever like that. So, 
a lot of yeah. shit like we just talk about here and only people that listen to this podcast know what we're talking about. However, mm -hmm. every now and then we talk about stuff that kind of like spills out into like everyday people, like people that don't follow this shit. Like even people that I weren't expecting to follow X-Men are talking about this episode. Like when the first episode of X-Men 97 came out, people were like, okay, that's cool. I'm going to sit up and watch, uh, watch this show with some cereals on Saturday morning. Nostalgia feel like that. <laughs> in my like, underwear. Yeah. In my underwear. You know, give me this video my Spider-Man underoos or something like that. Now by we get to episode five, everybody like, man, what the fuck? You know, now you guys are like, crying hey, in your crying in your cereal. <laughs> You're right, crying and you're still like, yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. Everything gives you trauma now, even your Saturday morning cartoons. So yes, you can't get away. From it. <laughs> so anyway, let's just talk about it. And, and the funny thing is, I gotta, I gotta, uh, uh, like I said, I'm big guy, so everybody just text me and see what's going on. So since it got so big, people texting me, what is that thing, uh, Leroy, that everybody's talking about? Was that Superman twenty seven? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> x-men 97 you know when here's a link just go watch it from there you know is that a uh, porn <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe so. all right so what was the big thing that happened the shocker eli the shocker. i'm just gonna come out the gate and just tell you what the fuck happened bam gambit dies oh no gambit dies yeah did he oh okay well okay i guess what, that's what, sad what did, what did you hear I thought like Magneto died and shit. Oh yeah, he died too. But yeah, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not really worried about him right now. <laughs> Magneto always dies. We yeah, he shit. always dies. But he's I, dead I, right I, now. <laughs> he's being resurrected oh, as we speak. He's back. He, he got better. He got better. Oh, Matter he's fact, he got better this week. I didn't read it. But okay. We know he's coming back. It's like he got we're... resurrected this week. He's always yeah. yeah that this, motherfucker this dies all week. He shows up. Matter yeah. of fact. Spoiler for later on in this episode, with nothing related to X-Men, but yes, we'll go. We're gonna come back to that. Put a pin in there. Yeah. Anyway, Krakoan age, all the X-Men die all yeah. the time. <laughs> anyway, can I can I cry for some? Can I cry on the pocket? Yeah, fuck yeah. Pour pour one out for Gambit. Yeah. Yeah, fuck Gambit. I don't even like Gambit. He was my least favorite out of that group in it like that. So oh shit! Yeah. Yeah, and that's where everybody <laughs> saying the greatest episode every time because their favorite whatever whatever died all the shit like that, but. He went out. He he went out like a fucking. Weren't they just stuff. ragging on him like a couple weeks ago for wearing a crop top or some this shit? Episode, how he was a cook and all this shit like that, and sit down and <laughs> Magneto's banging his girl and all that shit. Like yes, yes, they doing all this shit this episode <laughs> and then kill him off. So like, like if they just go put us through that, might as well just kill him off. You know, was, so, was, was Rogue ever his girl? I mean, he can't touch her. He can't touch her. Yeah. So they they you know they're. He's in the friend what, zone. He's been friend zone, man. man. Yeah, you're right there. Yeah. She <laughs> likes him as a friend. Meanwhile, yeah. Magneto is like, while the danger, danger room is on, don't come in here. You know, <laughs> I'm training. If the, if the danger room. room's knocking or yeah, rocking, don't, don't come, don't a come a knocking. Don't come a knocking. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. So, but here's the thing take all the Gambit dying, all the shit. Take all the Magneto dying and shit out. Take all that shit out there, Eli. Pretend like none of that shit exists. I'm still saying this episode is the best single episode that Disney Plus has dropped of anything. I'm still of saying, anything? Of anything. Really? Of anything. I'll put that against anything. Really? Whatever you want to put on it. I, 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 I already know you can come back like, the fuck? Re, re, I don't Moon care. Night? Man, you're, you're better, than Moon Night? better than Moon Knight? Better than Moon Knight. Better than She-Hulk. <laughs> better than Secret Invasion. Or Secret I, Invasion. I, yeah. I know this is but, high yeah. praise. Yes. Better than Megan Thee Stallion? Or yes. <laughs> twerking, yes, like that. Yes. And like Megan Thee Stallion, this Gambit dying. Yes. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I said, take all that bullshit out of there. What makes this episode great? Now, here's the thing, Eli. The main thing you don't like about X-Men, you say repeatedly because you said it's a soap opera. But what I realized from watching this moment from this episode, the main thing I like about X-Men is the soap opera. Because... I, I, I Yeah, I would. I understand that, yeah. Yes, because the thing is, like I said, this was a 30-minute episode. Now, if, since we all know about X-Men Law, we talk about X-Men Law on this show... Eli, I seen them run through about five different X Men storylines from the comics and about two entire runs in 30 minutes. How they pull that shit up, I have no idea, but they were just like, okay, the episode is basically Genosha. And then they went through the entire Genosha era and the Krakoa age all in 30 minutes. So when I'm watching it, I'm thinking, like, okay, we're finally introduced to Genosha. Okay, I'm thinking it's going to be at the end of the season. Because, like I said, anybody that read the comics, 
We know about Genosha. We know in Genosha, it's all about the Ethan extinction. Yeah, Watson is going to show up, mur start murdering people, massacring people like that. We know that's coming. So it wasn't a shock to us. But the problem was, I was thinking, okay, it's going to be the season finale. It's going to be the beginning of the next season, or maybe season three. You know, we're going to like live in Genosha and for a while. No, they, they started Genosha in the beginning of this episode. They killed Genosha at the end of this episode. It all happened in one episode. So 20 minutes in, when I start hearing bombs go off and shit like that, I'm like, wait, 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 we're here? We're already here. It's happening now? Like, what, but Genosha, Genosha was back in the old 90s cartoon too, wasn't it? Right, right, right. But, but remember in the old Genosha, it was like that mutant concentration camp. Yeah, yeah. I so that, so that. now this was like the uh the Grant Morrison era where he turned Genosha because you know before Krakoa they turned Genosha into the mutant oh like camp. the the safe haven or whatever like the, 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 like the, the mutant so state or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the episode began with them that had like a statue of Magneto one side, Charles Xavier one side, welcoming the mutants in there. You had all the mutants in there. Everybody celebrating. Everybody having fun. Eli. They have my girl in there. Where's my girl? Where's my girl? I am. Oh, here she go. Emma Frost? Dazzler. Fuck her. Dazzler? Dazzler. That's your girl? Yeah, that's my girl. That, I already told you Dazzler was my girl. <laughs> Give me Dazzler. I'm there. So I was like, Dazzler's going to show up in this episode. Dazzler's here. They had Dazzler in there. She like dances like that. Here's the thing. They were playing a song. With, they had the Hellfire Gala in, in here. Like already. Oh, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> So they had the Genosian, the Efe Extinction, Mutant Massacre, Hellfire Club, all this shit in 30 minutes. How they do that? And they were playing a song that I thought was, is that from Dazzler's mixtape they're doing? No, nah, it was from Ace of Base. <laughs> so from the Ace <laughs> They fooled me. They got me, but that's okay. Oh, uh, what else we got going on here? I don't even know what this is right here. What is this? Ace of, oh, okay. You Ace know Ace. 90s. I know you know Ace yeah, of Base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if I play the song, you'll know it. But I'm not going to play it because I'm going to get copyrighted. Anyway, they had, oh, uh, okay, they had another story. Like, all the bullshit I'm talking about right here, they had, like, this whole soap opera shit going on right now. They had the storyline and Grant Morris, I mean, yeah, Grant Morrison? Yeah, Grant Morrison did a storyline where Cyclops and Emma Frost was cheating. Well, Cyclops was cheating on Jean, Jean Grey with Emma Frost. But she was psychically <laughs> dressing up like Jean Grey. Because like she like a fetish kink type shit, and Jean Grey caught them in a psychic plane, Cy Cyclops cheating on her. So in this storyline, <laughs> it was Madeline Pryor doing that shit, psychically cheating on Jean Grey, and she caught them. Like I'm like, okay, this isn't that goddamn soap opera going on right now. But my favorite line in there, like I said, aside from all the bullshit going on like that, when Cyclops gave that speech on that TV, because they were basically doing a reality show on the X-Men. They buy the news crew over there like that. And Cyclops gave that speech that made me go like, oh, hell yeah. Basically, he said, fuck humans, basically. So if you know this, it sounds out, sound out of character. It sounds out of context. But if you know the storyline, they're kind of hitting at where they're going. The whole Cyclops was right error. Well, basically, like I said, if if they're doing what I think they're doing, like I said, if Magneto is dead, which happened in the comics because Magneto dies all the time, Cyclops more or less takes takes his takes his baton and runs with it and basically becomes like, I'm the new bad motherfucker. And the X-Men gotta take him down because he's just a fucking crazy, you know. So I'm like, damn, that's awesome. Oh, uh, what is oh, and another thing, Eli, the, the animation is mwah, chef's kiss. The old Saturday morning '90s cartoon was nothing like this. This is, this is anime. This is like <laughs> if you're watching this, it's like watching an anime. I've heard a lot of people saying that, like, damn, is this this an anime? You know, just because of the the action, the way it's flowing, it's like that, like Disney is pouring money into this shit. Like when Gambit finally goes out and he takes down the Wild Sentinel with all the crazy powers and shit. Even before he does that, and, and it's like it gives you Akira vibes. They are purposely trying to give you Akira vibes. From this episode cool. i'm like wow okay i have been noticing that the animation has been better that on, on yeah at, at times at times like i said you can yeah. tell they do some cheap animation sometimes but when they want to put some money into it and then you got all the blah, blah, blah all this shit like that yeah invincible do the same thing also like invincible seems choppy at some time but then you know when it comes to the big action scenes all of a sudden you could tell where the money going you all the razzmatazz all the razzmatazz you can tell when they put the money in and when they don't put the money they're in. putting in the ritz <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's all there. So, like I said, when Genosha is getting leveled and wiped out, it's horrifying, but it's awesome at the same time. I like just like because because of, of the animation, everything going on. Like, damn, they really putting some money. It's like very well animated. Like if they put if they would have put this episode in the movie theater and sell it to it, like I wouldn't complain. I would like I'm getting my money's worth. 
Uh, some people are saying they saw the Watcher in there. I didn't see it, but they're saying the, like right before the, the shit went down. Oh, okay. Maybe, I can kind of see that. Maybe, yeah, maybe nine. It's, it's, it's up for interpretation. If you want to say the Watcher there, cool. If not, you know, whatever. So, yeah. So, that's why I say this episode was awesome. I know everybody else was saying it's awesome because they killed Gambit. That shocking death shit, that don't get me. And another thing people are saying, well, obviously, because the cable showed up like five seconds in this show. It was like, no, it's about to happen. And then they start blowing up shit like that. So a lot of people are thinking that they're going up. Oh, what we got? Uh, you are on un, uh, uh, only. You oh, are. Cool. Well, thanks for are, listening. What What is that? I can't. Un, only or only or something? I, I am only. Is that a new slang term? Is that? Is that what the kids are saying these days? These these TikTokers? <laughs> uh what was i getting there oh yeah a lot of people are saying that okay because the show is so shocking like i said and, and the reason i'm saying i don't think may need because you didn't see the body you know the rule you know the oh, rule yeah. if you don't see the body you know plus in the ef extinction storyline in the comics magneto survived anyway he survived and we frost survived because that's when she found out she can turn diamond so she was there they had the quiet council in this episode i'm like how are they squeezing this much shit in 30 minutes the quiet council they had the quiet council in here yes <laughs> Like they apocalypse and sinister no, okay. and Emma not, Frost. Not, not and... the cra- no, not no. Okay, <laughs> they didn't go that crazy. They uh, basically they hinted like Emma Frost was there, Moria Mataggart was there. You know, not not apocalypse and all those folks like that. So, but yeah, but it was enough people like, what the fuck y'all doing the quiet castle? Okay, y'all y'all are digging in the crates with this X Men episode. So as an X Men fan, you see all little bitty shit going on and like I'm like hell yeah, this is you know you you give me what I want you know. Uh, well, so a lot of people are thinking that they're going to do some time travel multiverse bullshit to unwrap the thing because they were so shocked at the ending. Uh, because they don't, because I, like I said, we saw Genosha getting level coming, but if you don't know that storyline, you won't know Genosha's getting level. You just think, like, okay, it's some good shit, and then everybody just get wiped out left and right. So you're thinking Cave is gonna go back in time and change some shit. I'm hoping to God they do not do that, do not undo any of this. It's happened. Move on, because if you do that, honestly, you will erase all the goodwill these last five episodes have gave us. If you just up oh, time travel, everybody's back. Fuck it, never happened. It was a dream. Uh, Jean Grey was <laughs> sleep the whole time, or, or Professor X was sleep the whole time. Uh, uh-uh, don't do that. Make it stick. Make it happen. Now, if you bring Magneto back because he wasn't really dead, came back and said, "But Gambit, fuck Gambit, leave him dead. Just leave him on the ground. Just, just go do some other shit." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my whole thing with that. So, uh. Also, like I said, I'm rating this episode 6.5 out of 5. Like I said, if, even if you don't know anything about the X-Men, you can jump into this episode. They will tell you what you need to know. And these five episodes get it. Now, not only said I'm going a little bit further than that. Okay, that that dude, the the uh, the, the, cra- the show creator that, that died, I'm sorry, got fired. What the fuck was I thinking about? <laughs> yeah, he man. didn't die. He didn't die. He's still he's where he's alive. He got fired. The guy who got fired or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the guy that got fired. Okay, so here's what he said. Like I said, he's been off to he deactivated his Twitter. Oh, what's going on? But he went back on Twitter and he basically saying, like, y'all like episode five? Y'all thought episode five drained you? That was nothing. That was more warm up. The real episodes where shit goes down is episode eight through ten. We're like, the fuck? Like, that's this shit. Like, <laughs> that's this shit I'm warned about. He said, but he said episode five was the first thing that he pitched to Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige greenlit it just off that show. But a- episode 8 through 10, like the f- season finale, is the shit that where he says shit really goes down. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. So, I'm like, I know what's going to happen. But here's my thing, Eli. Now, I-, I know the guy's name against my will because I went on that. His name is Bo DeMeo. Now, like I said, I don't know if this was an issue with Disney and him like that, but the thing was when I went on his Twitter page to read everything he was going and, and here's the main thing. Like I said, with Genosha getting wiped out, I was thinking that it was a anal- uh, analogy to maybe Black Wall Street. You know, the mutants okay. having their own thing, they build their own thing, and then they get wiped out by something like that. But what he was making an analogy to was 9-11. I am like, huh. Okay. Okay. I see that. I see that. Okay. So that's where he was going with it when he did. He pitched his 9 11, even though I was thinking of Black Wall Street. But I guess you can put whatever you want to in you there. You can w- put whatever like traumatic event. That, right. You know. And that's what the X Men have always been. The X Men has always been a stand in for XXXXX, whatever you want to put in. Yeah. Like that. So, uh, yeah. But, but here's, my, here's my thing, Eli. I scrolled down a little bit too far on his Twitter page. Mm-hmm. I went uh, just a step too far. Uh, cause remember they said he had like an OnlyFans. He had no, a link. 
he had a link I for his own fans on his Twitter. Well, I oh, know. is that why he got fired? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that I went too far and I, I, I saw stuff I can't unsee, Eli. So since I had to go through it, fuck it. Y'all got to go through it, too. <laughs> Damn, that guy's that guy's hey, like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> he need to be in movies and shit, not making them. <laughs> right. And so, yes, because I had there to watch go. it. Eli, you got to watch it. Everybody watch this. Y'all got to watch it. Yes. Fuck y'all. There's, there's, there's your new Kang. <laughs> let's move on let's move on past it. Eli, I'm tra- no gambit dying didn't traumatize me that traumatized me let's move on past this <laughs> oh shit okay uh so got- ten, okay. 10 out of 5 tacos x-men <laughs> episode <right>. 5 <laughs> Damn it, I did not want to scroll down. I've learned my lesson, Eli. Do not scroll too far on Twitter. That shit will fuck you up. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, let's let's go to the video game. Let's go to the video game section. We got some more shit for you we talked about. We, we saw another TV show that is related to video games. So like I said, we got a bunch of video games, and Eli saw it, and Eli's going to give you the dirt, the nitty-gritty, the <laughs> all he can give you on this fantastic that's fantastic. I don't know. We're, we're gonna talk about what we got. Yeah, it ain't much. It, it ain't much. Yeah, it ain't much. yeah I, I can't give too much dirt on Fallout. Yeah, um, nope. I am not a Fallout expert by no means. Mm-hmm. I didn't even watch the whole show yet, so I, I'm about halfway through the series, mm-hmm. and I, I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it. I find it interesting. Um, I played one of the games. Not, mm-hmm. I didn't finish it briefly. I, do, for about do you know a week. Do you know which one? Either th- three or four. It might have been four. I don't know. So I'm, okay. I'm, I am not well versed in Fallout. I tried playing one of the games. It takes too fucking long. I ain't into that role playing shit, RPG, open world shit. It's where you got to, like, you know, get points for your mana and your charisma and your endurance and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And, Upgrade armor. I, I I ain't got time for that shit. So okay, can, can, I, can, I can, we, can we talk about Fallout the game for a second? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let, let's let's rewind this. What what is the game is about? Okay. So a lot of people got familiar with Fallout because of you know it was on Xbox was on and Xbox. PlayStation, like Fallout Three or Fallout Four. But what about Fallout Two and Fallout One? Nobody ever talks about those games. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And so I they, I just yeah good. I'm saying that that's Fallout Two right there. So it actually started out. As a role playing game, that's how it started out as. So that's where you got all that man and charisma and like Final Fantasy, like I said, because that's how it started out. It was the same thing, post apocalyptic, whatever, whatever, like that. But then when Bethesda got it, because I don't think Bethesda uh, started the franchise, I think they bought the franchise. And when they bought the franchise, that's when it turned into a first person shooter, but they in- incorporated elements from part one and part two, where you had the, you know, do this and do that, blah, 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 find stuff, you know, so they kind of like combine them in all the ones. That's why it's, it's kind of like a first-person shooter, but not a first-person The shooter. action role-playing game. The action role-playing game. So they try, to come, they try to have the cake and eat it, too. Not my cup of tea. Some people love that game. Some people yeah. have released them over and over again. I, I couldn't get the story. I fell asleep on it, I think, three or four. I don't I don't know. I think I was like one through the wasteland. It Basically, okay, for those that remember my Starfield review, Fallout is that but in a poke apocalyptic. So it's just as boring as that game. I thought I went into <laughs> it. Just, it just was what it was, you know? Yeah. I, I played it for about a week and like the store, I am the storyline. I like the concept of, you know, it's 200 years into the future, this alternate timeline, this like 19 where world war three or whatever happened in 1950 or something or the fifties. Right. So yeah. it's all this like fifties technology and shit. You know, and that, that, that's from the game. The, the game, did yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like I, I was into that concept in these vaults, these underground vaults, and I, I just remember playing as I come out of the vault, and the world's all fucked up, and I get a dog and a robot, and I'm collecting yeah. trash and bottle caps and shit. And yeah, you're doing a <laughs> lot of trash and bottle cap shit. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally, yeah. Occasionally, I, I shoot like some bugs and giant rats and. Then I meet up with some zombies people and, and yeah, I, I didn't even get to the zombies, but I didn't get to the zombies. When I got to the zombies in the game, I was like, okay, finally, something's happening, you know? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get that far. So, um, but I didn't, I did think that the concept was pretty cool. So that, that's, that's why I'll oh, check out this show. 
you know. Um, so, yeah, I watched like the first half, first four or five episodes, and it, 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 I'm, I'm into it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure if I was a fan of the game, I would probably like uh, appreciate the Easter eggs because I can tell, you know, yeah, they'll show. I mean, because yeah. they, they said something about bottle caps on there. Like, I'll pay you a thousand bottle caps if you shoot this motherfucker. I'm like, oh, so they, yeah. they got the bottle caps in there. So, yeah. Yeah, I can tell like sometimes they'll 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 show like a symbol or they'll show like a name and then the ominous music starts playing. Yeah. And I'm like, and oh that that, that, that that fault boy, pit boy, what what, what fault boy, whatever that, that mascot they got. Yeah. Oh yeah, that guy, the the yeah, that dude. The, um, the, the thumbs up guy, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, some musical start playing as oh, this must mean something. I don't know what it means, but I'm sure the fans are going wild right now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, but no, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the post-apocalyptic, you know, this 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 alternate universe or alternate timeline of 1950s dystopian future with the with the 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 the, the, the 1950s tech, you know, yeah. the, the 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 big toasters and the ham radios and the diners. That, that, that and seemed the, to be a that know. seemed to be a theme, like in post-apocalyptic <clears throat> uh, shows, like whenever the timeline end, everybody's kind of stuck in that time period. Uh, what what did we just watch? Twisted Metal. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So everybody. Well, was that was stuck. like the '90s because they were going no, through well, malls well, like, and shit. Like two, like 2000s. Like it was like 2000. Yeah. Whenever the thong song came out, that's when the world ended. So, yeah. <laughs> right. so yeah, there's all like this old timey like ragtime music is like always playing in the in the background yeah. and shit. And I knew know? like I had a girl like because she talks like she's from the '50s. She says shit like "okie dokie" and "holy moly" and stuff like that. Like yeah, she rarely curses because <laughs> she's in that '50s time frame where everybody else like fucked up you know like like that yeah so all that stuff i i enjoy i do like i honestly like i'm just two episodes in i think i'm on third episode just going into it i'm really digging this show right now and, yeah. and i like it let's let's break down okay there's been three video game shows that have came out so far all dealing with poke apocalypse apocalypse okay so we talk about twisted metal was on peacock post apocalyptic yeah let's talk about the last of us post apocalyptic i didn't let's, i didn't watch that one but yeah everyone says the, it's good did you did you play the game I, I never finished the game, but I did okay. play the game. Yeah. Okay. And so you got that, that, and you got Fallout. So all three post-apocalyptic shows. Now, tone-wise of all those shows, let's talk about The Last of Us. I think The Last of Us, because it was like super, super serious and down. It's not like, it just wants you to just be depressed watching that show yeah. when you watch it. So it that, it reminded me of, well, I didn't watch it, but the clips I seen did remind me of Walking Dead. So, okay. Which is just very bleak. Very bleak and, yeah, depressing. Best that. <laughs> so let's go to Twisted Metal. <clears throat> Where it's also post apocalyptic, but it's more campy, fun, upbeat, yeah. not taking itself too seriously, you know, which is nothing like the game. The cheesy, game, yeah, very cheesy, cheesy. Yeah, the game was nothing like that, but that's okay. That's that's the tone they want to take. That's it. So you got uh, Last of Us, super serious. You got Twisted Metal, fun game, not like that. I feel like this show, from what I've seen so far, like I said, you're further than I am from what I am right there. It feels like it's it's in the middle. Yeah, like, there not, there's not, like funny. Yeah. Yeah, there's funny scenes like where it go it sort of goes to parody where it feels like it's satire. It is making fun of, you know, our culture and you know the world. You you can, you know, there is a definite some, socio some yeah. commentary in this, yes. Yeah, there's some socio-political, you know, themes going on throughout. But mm -hmm. there's times where it does feel like it's 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 going it does go into like lean into satire and and farce, if you will. But um yeah. but 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 yeah, I mean um, there is shot. Well, it gets very time, violent. Yeah, but they, yeah. right, very violent. It, the show will take it serious, self seriously when it needs to. Yeah, you know, because that was yeah that, that opening. There was nothing jokey about that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that reminded me of the game I was playing. One of the yeah, I, it might have been four where you start out like yeah, the bombs are falling. You got to get into the the vault. Okay, and then see, you I, get I, like I didn't play. I didn't play that one. I must yeah, play and then you you get frozen. You're like frozen for two hundred years in like a cryo chamber, and then you wake up two hundred years later, and the world's all fucked up, and you go out and yeah, Mad Max world and shit. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, I, like I'm yeah, it's doing just enough to to keep me interested because I, I am enjoying it for the most part. I, I I think if I was a fan of the game, I'd probably appreciate. The Easter eggs and the references a little more, Man, and because every because every I've been seeing everybody. Oh, this game's like the or the show's the best show ever. I loved the game. What like some people are saying one of those games is like their favorite game of all time and shit. So um, I, I've heard people say that. I've heard people say it before. To be honest, yeah. Um, I know what's his name. 
Wade Adams. Remember from uh, Comicast? Adam Wade Adam. Adams, yeah. <laughs> Adam Wade, he had that helmet of the night. He did. The night yeah. helmet. Yeah, yeah, he had that displayed. Like he, he was into yeah. that shit. Yeah, he was like really into that. I've, I've, I've even heard people say they beat it. I'm like, you beat it? How do you fuck you beat that game? <laughs> <laughs> so Long time. And that's what I've heard. I've, I've heard like you have to like dedicate like a lot of time to those yeah, games. Yeah, like all again, like that, Skyrim, Starfield, all those games that the Bethesda make you pretty pretty much they need to be your only game if you plan on beating it. Yeah, that's yeah. You're, you're only yeah, d- yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have don't, don't just, like quit your job and just play the game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much that's it. <laughs> so no, but I'm I'm loving the I'm I'm loving this show right now. I'm loving the tone, the vibe of it, just what they're giving me so far on it. I do like that the show. Like I said, I'm not that well versed in the Fallout. I understand the concept of Fallout, oh, but this show just throws you into it. It yeah. doesn't give you any lore. It doesn't give you. It just boom, you're there. Yeah, so. and I think it does just enough to keep to keep new viewers like yeah. you know up to date because like we're we're used to, you know, post apocalyptic storylines. You know, they right. they're they're nothing new. But I like this approach. I like like I said, I like the aesthetics. I like that 1950s sort of environment with the you know the hose and the vacuum tubes and shit and that mm. old tech like the big toasters and ham radios and the big giant like ray guns like it looks like old 50s sci-fi movies with the ray guns and shit right. you know and the old rocket they ships. Were going for it. yeah yeah the old rocket ships the cowboy shits and the cowboy that cheesy old 50s country music playing in the background <laughs> You know, <laughs> like I like, yeah, I like the aesthetic. I like the feel of it. You know, um, there, there is a couple of storylines that I'm not like when I kind of check out the shit going on in the vault. I, I'm yeah. When that shit comes on, I kind of check out. I'm more interested in what's her name? Lucy yeah. and the night guy, Maximus or whatever the night, yeah. you know, and I, the, the I, ghoul so the, guy the, because at first i was I'm, i mean the first two episodes i'm into the vault i mean I, but but lucy was there so. yeah well she well i well she ends up leaving but they right, still right, deal I'm, I'm with now she yeah she goes on her her quest yeah. or whatever yeah the yeah but they still they still deal with what's going on in the vault and i kind of think i know where that's going so it's like oh, okay they're, they're dragging out a mystery that i kind of think i know the the answer to so yeah, i'm like when that shit happens i kind of yeah I guess I can yeah. get those acts on the dude because in the game, when you leave the vault, that's it. The vault's gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're in the yeah. world. You're in the thick of it now. So, because, yeah, they, they, they hint around, you know, that, that vault tech or that company that built all the vaults. They're like a mm-hmm. corrupt, you know, corporation that, you know, was doing some shady shit. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I can kind of tell where that, that storyline is going. So, whenever they switch to that, that plot line, I kind of like, eh, you know, drags a little bit, but, other than that, I'm I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm not a fan of the game. I don't know that the world that well, but I am digging on. So. Yeah. So, like I said, I haven't finished the show yet, so I can't rank it where it is. My video game shows of all time. When I finish it out, I can finally give a thing. But here's my thing, Eli. Let, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the business model that they dropped this on. Because the thing is, they dropped it all at one time. They dropped, bam, ten episodes. There you go. That's it. Uh, mm-hmm. I still think that's a mistake to do that. Yeah. And that's why I've only made it through half, like half of it, because it is a struggle. Like I said, I was doing other, I was, you know, doing other stuff this week, and it, it was it was hard to like just get through the ones, like find the time to just get through the right. first five episodes. I did get through. Right, yeah. and, and people keep saying, "Oh, what do you complain mm-hmm. about? You can just watch it whenever you want to. Watch yeah. it a week episode of time. You you can't do that. Not with the internet. Yeah. You can do that because the thing is, okay, you're watching through the show." Okay, you're gonna it's 10 episodes, 10 weeks later. By the time you get to the 10 weeks, anybody that has watched the show is gonna spoil everything for you. They're gonna talk yeah. about it, you're gonna see a meme about it, you're gonna hear a comment about it, you're gonna see a video about it. And it's not like you're gonna even be looking for it, it's gonna be just on your feed, on your timeline, everywhere you go. So by the time you get 10 weeks later to get the end of the show, everything's already been spoiled for you. Yeah, what it dropped on what Wednesday or Thursday? By Friday, right. I was seeing videos on YouTube ending of Fallout explained. I'm like, I- <laughs> right. So you can't sit around and wait. I mean, is that's a that's a good concept that you just sit there and just watch at your leisure. But nah, if you don't watch it when everybody else is watching it, they're gonna spoil it for you. And then on top of it, not only that, sit 
But by the time Tim Weeks come, and then oh, we'll just stay off the internet. Fuck off. Stay off the fuck no, you. No, right. no, no one can stay off the internet these days. Fuck off. <laughs> right. <laughs> like in theory, yeah, but no, that's not gonna happen. But on top of that, even even if you let's say you do avoid everything in it, okay, ten weeks later, you finally watch episode. Let's say you do stay off the internet. Ten weeks, you finally got to a ten episodes finished episode. Now you want to talk about everybody else? Guess what? Nobody's talking about it. No, no one gives a shit. We're we're yeah. done by then. We're not talking about we're not talking about this shit two weeks from now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're already spoiling season two, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> because with the internet, that's how fast the internet moved. The internet has moved on. Meanwhile, if you drop episodes a week at a time or even two two weeks episode, you got time to think about it. Eli, I guarantee you, if they drop X-Men 97 every episode on the first day, night, <laughs> night, yes, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. No, it'd be all done. <laughs> We'd be all done. We've been moved on to something else completely different. We wouldn't have dug in uh, episode five. We might have. We all we were going to talk about is the last episode, and that was it. Everything else would have just been just flew by, you know. Mm-hmm. But now, but see episode five, we can talk about it. We can dig into it. We can't talk about episode six of Fallout, you know, whatever that <laughs> is. Nobody's going to click on that. So, oh, but that's the thing. So, like I said, Amazon needs to stop doing that shit and, and spread the shit out. And plus, it's easy for them, like. A lot of people kind of wait for a show to drop so they can subscribe and do stuff like that. Gomer, you know. So <laughs> if you just drop it at one time, the people just just subscribe, watch everything, move on. But if you spread it out, they kind of keep subscribers on. We get engagement. Keep talking about it. More people will watch the show. So I don't mm-hmm. know why people are still following this this 2010 business model. So that's all I got. Yeah. I, I like this show, but come on, Amazon. Y'all gotta throw some bones, spread this shit out. And it would have gave more people talking right now, Eli. Nobody's talking about it. I mean, there are people talking about it, but it's not getting I don't think it's getting the buzz it should be getting. But yeah. if it dropped over a week of time and it started building an audience, people would have just like X-Men 97. The first episode, people were just like that ah, nostalgia shit, whatever, like that. Now more and more people are starting to get on board of the show because more and more people are talking about it. Because so. yeah, it does go into like you know the 50s the whole thing about the 50s that's when everyone was doing the duck and cover shit you right. know the whole you know the the, the bomb rate you know there was you know well, the atomic was, age was a was a big deal back then yeah the atomic age and kids were doing like atomic bomb drills in schools yeah you know I back mean, in if the you, 50s if you and think now about kids it. these days are doing other drills in schools you know yeah, i mean that yeah. that that <laughs> They they could have totally made that like you know that connection of like I said it's got these social themes, you know going on that re- they really could be explored and really could be like we really could be talking about every week, you know yeah. with that and then of course there's the, the classism the vaults were ba- you yeah, know the it's, vaults it's really basically there. yeah uh-huh. yeah the are, are basically the one percent that were that had enough money to go into the vaults right you know, and. And you know, she's the, sheltered. The people, she's been in a vault the whole time. Now she's yeah. in the, the real world. You know? Yeah, she's she comes from a life of privilege. <laughs> right. <laughs> they you say know? that that's in the show. So yeah. Yeah. And um and then yeah, then you got Maximus and that whole thing, you know. The you know, he's the the knights. What are they? The, the, they're like a knight, the, those robot suits, they're like they're a knight. From the game. Like, I can't remember the names, but yeah. Yeah, but but they're like a knight Templar. They're like trying to be like royalty. Like they're talking about my my squire and you know right. knighting him and you know but it, they're like but they're yeah. assholes, you know. <laughs> yeah, but <they're, laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh but yeah I mean it, yeah I, I it's interesting. It, it's like I said it's not nothing new we haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen post apocalyptic you know Dystopian futuristic, but it's story. having its I mean, fun. Yeah. I mean, you got you got zombies, yeah. you got giant cockroaches, you got robots, you got all this stuff like that. You know, yeah. Oh, uh, a matter yeah. of fact, what I was talking about, like like I said, like I said, we're dealing with the fifties or that era, the atomic age. It was such a big deal. Pretty much all of Marvel's heroes around that time was influenced by that. Think yeah. about it. Everybody got radiation. Hulk, radiation. That's yeah. power. Spider Man, radiation. Spider Man, Fantastic Four, radiation. Fantastic uh, Four, yeah. Fantastic Four, X Men. Eli, you know, I'm reading all the old shit now. I just realized that, and what I read back and read it, so apparently Professor X's parents lived in New Mexico. Ah. Uh. <laughs> near that, around the time, doing the... Uh, uh, Oppenheimer shit? <laughs> yeah, the Oppenheimer shit, Project Man- Man- Manhattan Project. Yeah, so apparently his parents lived in the area, and they talked about how they were doing bombs shit like that, so they got infected, and that's how he got his power. So all that radiation shit in the back of the head, that's what they were thinking about. So... 
Yeah. And I'm pretty sure we miss people and, too, but that's that was the rare current thing. So yeah. well, Geiger, like we talked, you know, uh Jeff Johns, he's he just launched his comic universe last week with that, you know, all his, you know, spinning out of that I was a ghost machine or whatever universe. Mm -hmm. But Geiger was like kind of like that. It was kind of like, yeah, he was like a radioactive man living in a post-apocalyptic dystopian future. Mm -hmm. That, you know, um, so yeah, that that you know that kind of like who knows he might have been influenced by fallout that's the thing that's what i found out this week like the first fallout game came out in the 90s like, yeah where the fuck yeah, have i been <laughs> old as fuck yeah that's what i'm saying yeah because <laughs> they play completely different than people know from the xbox games so yeah yeah and the one oh, i played was from like 10 years them, ago or whatever yeah if anybody want to get them steam is having a sale on i, I think the entire <laughs> fallout franchise if you want to just get them i think i saw uh fallout 4 for like five dollars on there if anybody wants to play it so yeah or yeah. doesn't already own it. Yeah, yeah, it showed up on. I don't know if it was PlayStation Network. I, I, I it, yeah, it was one of the, you know, it came free well, with one of my subscriptions, and I, well, you know, I said yeah, I, I've never, yeah, because you know, yeah. okay, so so Bethesda bought Fallout, but Microsoft bought Bethesda, so I'm okay, almost so certain, yeah, it was probably Xbox. It's probably Xbox. So if you gonna get if you get Game Pass, you probably can play all of them right now for free. Yeah, because so. it was during like. Probably the pandemic when I tried, you know, when I was bored and had time, you know. <laughs> but I, I still wasn't that bored. To, right. right. Like Fallout. <laughs> yeah, just those role playing games. They're just not my thing, you know. <laughs> right. Last thing I want to talk about Fallout because we, we got to talk about this because I keep seeing this shit only. Eli, you're further than I am on this. So is the show woke? Oh. Well, it's just, there's it's a, a big one... thing. If you if you go if you go online right now, that's the first thing that pops up. All these grifters, that's the first thing they're saying. Before the show came uh, out, they were like, "The better wants to watch this woke garbage." Like, what, what's woke about? Is is one of the cockroaches gay or some shit? Like, what, what's woke about it? Well, the woman, she's one of the protagonists, is a woman. Is, there's is the it, black guy. Is it really? That, um, is it really that bad? A black robot? I I get I guess is, like is the, is the zombie stupid. gay or some shit? I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, if it's a if it's not a white, a straight white guy, it's woke. I guess that's what it is. That's wow. that's 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 the line. Wow. <laughs> straight white I thought, dude I thought, or woke. Yeah. <laughs> so they just saw white woman, black robot, gay zombie. They're like, it's woke. Like, <laughs> is that where we are right now? Okay, y'all. I'm double here because I'm I'm watching the show and I'm like, okay, the first two episodes are pretty good. I go to it. I wonder what everybody's saying. And I see woke, 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 woke. I'm like, did I miss miss some shit? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. And like I said, yeah. got social comment commentary to it, which I actually like about that. Like I said, she's from high society, going to the real world, and they play all this stuff like that. So yeah. So anyway, fuck those guys. Watch the show. We recommend it. And it, the show is brutal as fuck. The like, yes, yes, it, it goes it hard. It yes, it's it like does. the boys. It, <laughs> it, it really is. Now that you think about it, yeah, it's basically the same vibe as the boys. So yeah, yeah. All right. So. That's always fun. <laughs> that so like always puts a smile on my face. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so highly recommend if you haven't watched it, click it, watch it. You don't have to know anything about the game. Matter of fact, the less you know, the better. Just go in and not knowing shit about it because the world is so engaging. You're going to want to know more about it. Yeah. Like, I, I was like, damn, I'm like, damn, should I play the game? And then I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't think the game is, <laughs> I, I don't think the game is like this. I think this is one of the situations where, the TV show or movie is far superior to the game. That's just my opinion. So yeah. Yeah, or just watch the cutscenes or something on YouTube. I don't think they have any. I think you're just walking into a dude and just talking. It's, 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 it's. <laughs> That's right, another thing is that you yeah. you had to like choose your answers or something. Whenever you talk to somebody, you had to like choose your like response and shit. Right, and, and it depends yeah. on whether how they respond to you. A persuasion goes up plus point or some shit. So. Yeah, your charisma or your endurance or yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can't do that, man. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So we love the TV show. Fuck the game. So yeah. <laughs> uh, watch somebody go love Fallout. Adam Wade Adams going to send us a nasty ass message on this shit. <laughs> Yeah, he was deep. Like I, 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 cause I remember like when he had that thing. I'm like, what is that thing? Oh, it's from Fallout. Like, okay. And that's right. I think it's time when when he when Fallout came out. Well, like Fallout Four came out. So and he, like, like um, great, so. I worked with the dude. This is like shit. Like a while. Like like shit. Like 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Obama might have still been in office, but I worked with the guy who had one of them wrist things, like like the wrist things. Oh, that, that, they that got? Pip boy, the Pip boy thing. Yeah. Yeah, that thing. He had one of those, and he was all proud of it. I'm like, what the fuck is that from? Oh, Fallout. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is Fallout? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it, yeah, this had this has a huge following that I had no idea existed. So <laughs> everything's got a subculture nowadays. So yeah. Yeah. So but the show uh, is pretty cool. So yeah. I'm like highly recommend it. Everybody watch it. So yeah. Uh let me say we move on to the next part of the podcast. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm a, I'm a okay. I'm a, this is comic okay. bullies. We're we'll talking about comic books, and I'm gonna let Eli go first because he got some books to talk about. And I'm shocked he did not uh do Thundercats. I, I did not know, man. The last no. I didn't read the new ass Thundercats. Did you read Thundercats? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> I saw well, the last issue was just cover. okay. I, the I, last I issue was just I okay. I saw on the cover, and I'm just like, hey, <laughs> I'm not a furry. I'm just saying. It was, <laughs> I was young, and it was the 80s. That's all. But if I was going to bang a chick in a fucking costume? <laughs> I'm just saying, if I was, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. if I was into interspecies erotica. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Well, post, I, I, where, damn, I shouldn't delete it. I should have posted a picture of Tara. I just posted a well, picture of Tara and just go, okay, hear me out. <laughs> and just leave it at that. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll do Incredible Hulk number 11. Is okay. Hold on. Let me throw that up there. Bam. Okay. I got you. So, this is this the new Hulk run where it's basically the monster of the week. He's uh, oh, shit, uh -oh. on the run. In New Orleans, um, he's got this uh, little, uh, this like teenage girl who, like you know, was abused by her dad, and she's on the run um, with with the Hulk. Um, she got like kidnapped by this old lady who turns out to be a serial killer that kills kids and turns them into dolls. Oh, um, I forget her name, but it turns out she's like some biblical like ain demon thing. Um, that's putting the souls of the, yeah, she's been doing this for like eons, you know, mm -hmm. stealing kids and putting their souls into these little dolls. Um, Hulk basically fights her, oh, kicks her ass. Oh, he, oh yeah. Well, yeah, they, they, they fight. And then, um, Gabriel or whatever, an angel comes down and basically says, Hey, you need to stop doing this. I know you're doing this shit for me. I forget her backstory. They give her a backstory on why she's doing this. Um, but the other angel comes down and says, yeah, we're done. You, you don't need to do this anymore, blah, blah, blah. The Hulk basically destroys her. And then he's like, okay, it's time to go. Uh, I forget that girl's name. And she's like, Hulk, Hulk, I can't, I can't move. What's going on with me? And then Hulk, at the end, Hulk finds her, but she's a doll. <laughs> So her soul's oh, in a doll. Man. So, the, so was he trying to save that girl doing the story? Or? Yeah, he's trying to save her the whole time, you know. And she, yeah, then she got, yeah, uh, put her, yeah, she's just, so she's inside a doll right now. That's where it ended. I'm like, oh shit. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I, this is, I've been enjoying this series, you know. This has been pretty cool. Like I said, it's taking Hulk back to its monster movie, you know, roots. And uh, yeah, it's just a, you know, he fights a different monster every issue, every month. Monster of the month. Sort of, uh, you know, story arcs. So, yeah, um, I'll give yeah, it a four out of five. Whole stories used to be so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Four out of five. Cool, cool. Okay, what I want to do is any of the X falling? Eh, eh, let's, eh. let's 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 fall with the X. Oh no, <laughs> more is this, fall. Is this the last fall. issue or no? Hell no, this Hell should no. never end. <laughs> I should the yeah. Of the falling. <laughs> Because I read Wolverine, the the, the, oh, the, the saber, saber tooth war. war, yeah, and there's still like three or four issues left of that. Yeah, I'm wondering. Well, I'm pretty sure. I think when the X finally falls, I think all these uh, books are gonna get canceled. Like X X Force, X Force is still going. X, sure yeah, Benjamin change. Percy was writing that too. Yeah, because you know, because they got to put Beast back in his, you know, he's back in his box and all stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so anyway, no, the X will fall in. Because remember, Iron Man is basically an X-Men book now. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's married so, so, to, who's it, Emma Frost or whoever? Married to Emma Frost, yeah. So And he's teamed up with the X-Men to fight the Sentinels and all that shit like that while they go do all the other bullshit like that. So yeah, The Sentinels are Iron Sentinels. Or Iron Sentinels or because Sentinels. the bad guys stole his patent 
they own mm-hmm. Star Tech now, so they just made Iron Man Sentinels now, so he can't do this shit. So anyway, uh, last issue, he basically built a machine to fight all the Iron Man Sentinels and got his ass kicked. And we picked up from there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. All right. So the book starts off with Iron Man. Oh, yeah, just strung up. I, I think I've seen that man machine. I've seen this. I've seen this image before. I wish Cliff was here because I know he would point this picture before. But this is a this is an homage or something else. But anyway, he's in a fifty foot Iron Man suit that just got hacked by uh Fei Long, who I got in trouble for that saying one time. Fei Long is his name. Like literally, got hacked. He took a <laughs> giant Iron Man Sentinel, plunged it into his heart, got out of there, and now is roaming through there like some kind of virus or some shit like that. So yeah. Uh. So meanwhile, Tony kind of like uh knocked his knocked himself on his head. So he has a concussion, and while he's seeing all kind of like weird hallucinations shit like that. So basically, you get like a a best of both worlds, a greatest hits of Iron Man just like that. And I forgot they did this dumbass storyline where they basically said like the starts adopted him, and he really was a, a, a son of a country singer or some shit. There's some dumbass Brian Michael Bendis bullshit that I thought they read kind of got rid of, but nope, he is the gift that keeps on giving. So yeah so uh yeah and he goes on past that and he finds howard stark his adopted father and he gets drowned by all of his bad guys he's been fighting obadiah stain and whiplash and all the bullshit like that uh basically this part oh yeah and he has dreamed about magneto also so for some reason he's been having nightmares about magneto lately why he had magneto he don't know but he's like it doesn't matter because magneto was dead so he why is he having dreams or is he you know um mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, I fuck all that shit. Don't care. Skip all past that. Uh, he he re- reconciled with his dad or his adopted dad, whatever like that stepfather. And then he wakes up and he finally realized that okay, he finally makes it to the heart of the thing because he he's trying to find a way to basically power his Iron Man suit back up. That giant Iron Man suit he's in right now. So he walks into the mainframe and bam, he gets knocked in the back of the head by Phalon. Phalon was there waiting for him the whole time. And Iron Man, then Tony's just like, no, this ain't going to happen. So he blasts them. He's like, that's for killing my friend, asshole. And then uh, Fei Long is like hitting him with all kind of blasts. But he specifically made this suit to fight Fei Long. So this fight pretty much doesn't last long at all. Blasts him, grabs him, punches the shit out of him, knocks him out. And basically just, and Fei Long's like, do it, finish it. And Tony's just like, no, I'm not going to finish it. Turn off the Iron Man Sentinels. Or I'm going to make you wish I killed you. And it's where Fei Long basically uh, drops a spoiler on him that we read in other X-Men books. Here's the thing, Stark. I'm not controlling the Stark Sentinels. I was, but now they're being controlled by the robots that work for Ar- uh, for Orcus, like Omega Sentinel, Moria Metagard, uh, Nimrod. They basically played us. They wanted us to go into war with y'all the whole time. Meanwhile, they had their own plans to take over the world. And kill everybody and just have robots take over the world. So I'm not even controlling the Sentinels. And they sent even more Sentinels to him. And basically, Phalon is like, look, Stark, the only way we're going to get out of this, we got to team up. So the guy he's been trying to kill this whole time, uh, and he's basically calling the X-Men. Well, he's calling Emma, like telepathic. He was like, hey, honey, uh, can you send some X-Men over here to help me out? He's like, no, honey, we're busy right now fighting other Sentinels. So I have no X-Men to spare. And Tony, why did you lie to me? He's like, I didn't lie to you. Like, yes, you did. You told me you had enough power or you didn't have enough power to power the Iron Man suit. And look at you. It's dead on the ground right now because you ran out of juice. Who like, well, I didn't technically lie. I said I knew a way to power the suit. I just didn't power it yet. So, but she's like, don't worry. While we're, X-Men are fighting the Sentinels, I'm going to send one X-Men your way to help you out. So, you're welcome. And then that's when the Sentinel, that, that well, the Iron Man suit that in just opens up and boom, his greatest fear, Magneto, was there. So remember we talked about Magneto was dead? He got better. So, And Magneto's yeah. just like, your wife sent me, Stark, to be continued. So, yeah. Even though he's been here, mm-hmm. and the next issue is Iron Man teaming up with Magneto to fight Iron Man Sentinels. So, yeah. So that story. So pretty much, and I wonder, with all this X-Fall, and what they're going to do with the Iron Man story, is they going to reboot the Iron Man book, or is it ending? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like I said, this this even though some shit happened, this felt like a filler. But I still enjoyed it when they finally got to the actual story. This whole backstory of him, and, and I hate that adopted parents bullshit. I thought they got rid of that, but whatever. Overall, three point five out of five. Still enjoying it. The guest artist. So cool. so, yeah. is this connected to the resurrection of Magneto? 
<laughs> he's already back. That's what I'm saying. They're basically saying, yeah. like, all that shit done, Magneto is here. Because he basically, Emma sent him to go rescue Stark, uh, Tony. Well, yeah, and then I'm reading Wolverine, and he's fighting Sabretooth and all the Sabretooth clones, and yeah. you know, getting you know, getting all fucked up down there. But then he's also in that main X Men book up in space, fighting Orcus right. ships and shit. But but like, didn't they say like the Wolverine Sabretooth shit happened before the fall of X? I think I think they put like a disclaimer in there. I don't know. Oh, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I thought they said that. Maybe maybe not. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, well, maybe sure. It. That works. It, it's I suppose work it's all going to work out <laughs> at, uh, to work for everybody at the end anyway. So, whatever. Anyway, that's why I'm not reading resumes anymore because like he's going to come back. What the fuck? Basically, storm with the hail, rescued him. He's back. Well, there you go. Oh. I saved you like right. twenty dollars. So yeah. All well, right, so, another uh, other book. Yeah. yeah, the only other book I'm going to review is Transformers number seven. Okay, this one okay, with Star Screen. Uh, yeah. Some. Oh yeah. So this just some shit happened. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, Daniel Warren Johnson, writing and drawing this shit, um, still continues to be dope. Uh, so we have we start out with like a flashback back on Cybertron, RC and Huffer and a couple other like C list uh, Autobots are you know engaging in a battle. They're getting all fucked up. RC goes in and Ooh, sees like man. a corpse. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm finds, the panel. I'm just the artwork. Yeah, that's, that, that's Daniel doing. Warren Johnson, man. Yeah. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's she finds this uh like Autobot corpse, like skinned alive or like paneled alive. I don't know, like all his metals off of him and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a flashback. Um, then we go back to uh, yeah, I think this has to do with GI Joe and shit. Um, you know, the whole the shit on the boat. You know, they're, oh, yeah, they're, giant they're, they're making that movie where they're crossing over or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then we go to the Decepticons. Now, this shit's dope. The Decepticons. Mm -hmm. um, Starscream, you know, he's been leading the Decepticons this whole time, you know, getting them all fucked up. Soundwave basically says, you know what? Starscream has been fucking us up ever since he's been leader. You know, we keep getting our asses kicked. We keep getting our asses kicked by the Autobots who are barely functioning. We keep mm -hmm. getting our asses kicked by the, by, by the humans. You know, Starscream basically sucks at a, as a leader. And I think it's time for him to stand down. Who's with him? Basically doing a mutiny. <laughs> right. And Starscream's like, fuck off. Who the fuck do you think you are? I'm, I'm the leader of Decepticons. And, and all the other D Decepticons are like, yeah, he kind of does suck. <laughs> <laughs> So Starscream, I mean Soundwave basically says, I challenge you for to be our, you know, to be warlord or whatever. You know? And then they have a fight. And then the, the, like one of I think it was Rumble, he says, Hey, you know, you must you, you must face him in battle. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so they do. They have this and it's Daniel Warren Johnson. He's a big pro wrestling fan. So and his action is just crazy. It's basically sound wave and just beating the shit out of Starscream. Like beats the <laughs> shit mm -hmm. out, rips him apart, has like laser beak, you know, he's got the tapes, laser beak, the tiny laser hawk that turns into the tape. Fucking like rips out like one of Starscream's eyes and shit and oh, damn. sound wave like this is for like stepping on Ravage, the dog. You know, he had that dog, you know, the right. robot dog and shit. They you know, big beat the shit. He well sound wave like crushed him. Couple episodes or episodes, but I thought I thought <laughs> Ravage was Sound Ray Wave's pet dog. So yeah, whatever. the tape fucked him up. Yeah, he fucked him up. Starscream fucked him up like a oh, couple Star, issues Star, ago. Okay, I thought you said Sound Wave fucked him up. So Starscream fucked him up. No, right. no. So so yeah. So Laser Beak's like ripping out his eye, ripping out Starscream's eye, and Sound Wave like this is for you know this is for stepping on my Ravage or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Basically fucks him up, pulls his his uh. Matrix out, you know the the all spark or whatever that's inside every transformer robot pulls his pulls that out and then just throws Starscream's body off a cliff. So Starscream is dead. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty brutal. And then he's like, "I'm gonna use this spark to resurrect, you know, not only resurrect Ravage, but I'm gonna repair us." It's like together. He like his big huge speech with the Decepticons. Together, we are gonna destroy the Autobots. 
Together, we're going to take over this world. Together, we're going to conquer the universe. Who's with me? And all the Decepticons are like, yeah, Soundwave. So yeah, Soundwave is the leader of the Decepticons. I don't know if that's I'm ever okay happened before. That. I don't yeah. know, that, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, Domer will have to let, let us know if Soundwave was ever the leader of the Decepticons at any point in like any of the comics or right. on the cartoon. Uh, like, the cartoons I've watched, they, he, he never has been. But uh, Well, yeah. as an expert of the Michael Bay movies, <laughs> it's never happened there. So. <laughs> what the fuck was Soundwave in the Michael Bay movies? Was he just like a – what the fuck was he? Like was he a – was he – he wasn't like a tape player, right? Huh. He was – Honestly, I kind of forgot those movies, so I don't know. I, I know do he remember was in it, but yeah, I do remember Ravage, like being in there, like you know, he was like a big spiky. Yeah, he, he had all robot of them. Duck. He had all of them, but yeah, I but I don't remember what Soundwave turned into. I don't know either. Yeah, fuck Eli. Now you got to make me watch that movie. Again. A satellite or something? Now I gotta watch. Well, the movie. I, I don't want to watch this movie, but it's gonna be stuck <laughs> in my head until I watch that movie. You gotta force just Google me to watch. it. Just Google <laughs> Soundwave Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, that'll save me from watching that movie because now I'm like, I can't concentrate until I watch that damn movie. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so after that happens, we switch to you know the humans and uh, what's her name, Carly or whatever, the Spike's friend. You know, she's all mourning her dad, and so this is RC, the pink that pink uh, transformer. Uh, uh, her, she's like. Talking to Carly, she's like, you know what? I lost my dad or like somebody I considered my father once too. You know, his name was uh, Magnus, Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, wait. R RC said it? Yeah. Ultra, Ultra Magnus. Magnus is her, her father? Or her like mentor. She's like, he taught me oh, okay. how to fight and be a soldier. And then, but I let, but I let, I let my rage and my bloodlust consume me. And that's what got him killed. So I think that co that that corpse here, that robot corpse, I think that's Ultra that's Magnus. Ultra Magnus? Yeah, that's, that's metal as fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then we switch to uh, Optimus Prime and Spike. Now, Spike last issue, Spike's dad basically gave his life, gave his life energy to reignite Optimus's Prime, Optimus Prime spark, basically bring back Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, and he's trying to comfort Spike, and uh, but he's like, I just I understand why he did it. I know he sacrificed my dad, sacrificed, you know, for for the greater good and all that. But I just needed me a moment. So like Optimus is like, okay, cool. I'll let you, I'll give you time for himself for yourself. So this is weird. So they're driving. Optimus Prime is a, he's he transforms in his truck and he's driving with the Autobots. They're all they're. they're going somewhere but then optimus prime has these visions like all you know these like dreams like while he's driving he has these like visions of holding spike as a baby like optimus prime holding spike as a baby mm, okay. um and then he's like what the fuck and then crashes <laughs> <laughs> so optimus prime's having visions so i think when his dad like Put himself into his matrix or whatever, into that his spark to reignite Optimus Prime. I think maybe his memories kind of got into Optimus Prime's memories, and that's what's happening. I think because Daniel Warren Johnson's he's really into like anime and manga. He's like really into like Gundam and shit like that, Robotech yeah. and shit. So I'm wondering if he's bringing that like weird, you know, ghost in the shell shit from anime over to this comic. So right. I'm not I'm not mad at it. I'm just like that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> just Optimus Prime having dreams, having visions and shit. So so yeah, that's where it ends. Um and yeah, so this is another dope issue. I I've like dick rode this comic since it dropped. I love this fucking book. And it's Yo, another they five go out right of five. Now, uh, do a show tonight. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't post it. I wonder because I don't want to see what they have to say about this. Well, I know before it dropped because I, you know, Gomer, you know, he said he had read it like last. When did he read it? He said he read. He said, "Oh, it's so great," because he got an advanced copy or whatever. So yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, he was saying it's so great. Oh, it's so good. So I, I know he liked it. But yeah, this was dope. This is dope. So another, you know, double thumbs up. 
10, 10 out of five tacos, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay. All right. So next book I'm going to do is, oh, let me get out of here. Boom. Okay. Last book, last book I'm going to do is a Superman book. We're going to do Action Comics. Number I did read this. You did read this. Did re okay. I, did read. Right. I figured Next. you would do it. So that's why. <laughs> now, here's the reason. There's a reason I did it because I, I debated whether or not I was going to do it or not. But when I saw who wrote this book, Josh Williamson, I was like, okay. Because he wasn't writing this. No, I thought it was going to be Jason Aaron again, but I guess not. So. No, I think Jason Aaron was just doing like an arc, like to get that in get out. The yeah, the, the Bizarro arc, whatever. Yeah, Bizarro arc. And he was like, okay, now he's done with the arc. Now let's move on to something else. So this one, yeah, Jason. So Jason Williams, I'm, I'm sorry, Josh Williamson, I guess is doing both books now. Yeah. So, yeah. So he's pretty much the main writer on all the Superman books. So what do we got here? Oh, move out there. Get that back up here. Oh, so it's Action Comics number 15. This is a new arc. Uh, The arc is House of Brainiac. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Oh, um, we're gonna get a. We haven't had a Brainiac story in a while. Actually, the last time I saw Brainiac was like in the Milestone universe. He was fighting like Icon or some shit. You know? Well, they've been teasing him for a while. Like I haven't read Joshua Williams Superman book in like a year, yeah, or so. Like last year, and they were teasing like Brainiac, and he had he was doing something with Lobo. So, so that's why I jumped back on. Okay, so. Interesting. Okay, so basically this yeah. is okay. So I'm thinking he just so it's not really just a fresh arc. He's basically been doing this for a while. Yeah, he's been building something up here. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, let's get to an action comics number ten. What is it? Ten fifty? I guess. Ten sixty three or something. Ten sixty three. Oh, thank you. Okay, I could read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, here we go. So the book starts off with space, the final frontier. Oh, uh, and yeah, Brainiac is basically come to fuck shit up. And yeah, there we go. So Lois, day off. That's pretty much what it is. Lois having a day off. She has a mixtape from Pete Ross, which I don't know how she knows Pete Ross. Pete Ross from Smallville, not from Metropolis. And I'm wondering, is did Pete Ross make her songs from a mixtape? Or is that Pete Ross mixtape? Is he rapping on it? Does he have like the hardest mixtape <laughs> in Metropolis? I don't know. Let's anyway. Anyway, she's doing a thing, going through that meeting. Pretty. You basically get like basically this kind of introduction if you don't know the Super Family. You got Super Family. You got kind yeah, of, that's that's what yeah. kind of like okay, this is going because I I wasn't why I wasn't reading the action book. Yeah, but, this, Super but family. This, yeah. this is the introduction. So basically, since yeah. Lois's day off, she wants uh Connor and Kong Kong King Keenan. I guess Kong uh, she wants them to watch the super <laughs> Kenny and Kong. Uh, <laughs> she wants them to watch the super twins while she uh is basically going to Centennial Park. She sees Kara, she sees uh Lana Lang, Steel, and Steel. They got engaged. So I, didn't, I didn't know Lana, I didn't know Lana was super now. <laughs> well, I thought she was, and they went away, but then they brought it back. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah, she got powers now. Uh, but they, like it, but that's good. I mean, that's just good. You know, that's good comic book writing. One page, he introduces everybody. Yeah, because yeah. they basically want you to feel like, okay, big. You can. This is a jumping on point for people. Yeah, trying to get into it. This is a jumping on point for you, especially since his first time on the book. Perry Wright running for mayor. Matter of fact, says they running for mayor, so you know who he is. Ron True, works for Daily Planet. Boom. So he's introduced you everybody in these books, and it's even new to the supervillains because John Corbin, Metallo, they've been he, they've been in there. He had his Metallo family. You got Bibbo showing up. You got Parasite. Parasite, yeah. Uh, who else we got here? Livewire. And these all people have been fighting. Lombard shows up. So, yeah. Uh, Chica Koa. Now, I'm not too familiar. He, I think he's new. Or he might have been old. I don't know. Whatever like that. Basically, status quo for Lex Luthor is that he has been transferred from Strikers Island to Supercore because he saved the plant. He saved Metropolis in, in uh, the other Superman book. So, the base of that. So he's going to Centennial Park. Centennial Park is like the big thing in Metropolis. Uh, basically, their version of Times Square, you know. Uh, and he introduced to his, uh, his daughter and Mercy, you know. Uh, so, yeah, what is Lois doing? And, oh, and, and Lois, uh, sorry, Jimmy Olsen and his new girlfriend, who is the Silver Banshee, who used to be a Superman villain. But she's good-ish now. So yeah. That does rem that remind, that's like, they, I vaguely remember something about that. We 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 reviewed that book. That was in. Yeah. Oh, see, that's the thing. Everything they're doing. Well, it's like they're combining the Superman book and the Action Comic book into one book. That's what it feels yeah. like. Yeah. 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 Because they're basically doing storylines from both of that. That's uh, smart. Well, if he's writing both books, yeah. That's. Writing, but but he yeah. wasn't writing the action book. I, uh. 
the guy that's writing the Hulk book, Hulk book now was writing that book. Okay. But he's Kennedy still or whatever. Kennedy, yeah, but he's still incorporating the stuff that was in that book in this book. But it's mostly the stuff because the super core stuff never showed up in action just in super superman books, but now it's showing up in here too. So it's like everything, everything together, like that. Anyway, uh, and they're like, Well, where Clark's so basically they're, they're doing yoga in, in Centennial Park. They're like, Where's Clark? Eh, you know Clark, you know he is, he's always late, but really he's doing Superman shit. Yeah. So the thing is, what you have here is Superman having fun being Superman, flying with birds dolphins he sees a wave puts his hand through the wave so he's actually having fun as superman is that is that a thing is that possible i guess you know yeah that's fine yeah flying over a, a soccer game i'm sorry oh a football football, football. football. Uh, shout out shout out to F- our listeners in zimbabwe shout out to y'all i, I see yeah. y'all i hear y'all so f-u-t-b-o-l right <laughs> <laughs> football yes. yeah and, and the kid's like hey superman and he high fives the kid breaks his arm you know anyway <laughs> uh and he flies over to the centennial park where everybody else and he shows up as clark hey, hey guys how you doing and like clark what the fuck are you wearing you know because he got to be all goofball nerdy shit like that because he's clark kent and they're like so why did you want to meet us at centennial park and why are you taking a day off when you never take a day off and they're like we have an announcement today. and right before they make the announcement superman gets his super senses tingling uh, basically, here's some shit. Like, you know, <laughs> like that. And they're like, Clark, what's going on? You know, he's like, Clark can't, and he's like, get out now. You, you can tell he he switched. He ain't Clark. He's Superman. Like you, mm-hmm. they, she knows the difference. She knows when you, you know different. And basically, falling out of the sky is a bunch of Brainiac robots and Lobos. <laughs> Even though yeah. Lobo's supposed to be the last Lobo, so Superman has already switched, and he's calling the Super Family. Okay, y'all, stop doing what you're doing. Stop playing arcade games and shit like that time to go to super mode. is that what that was did brainiac shrink one of lobo cities or something i don't know i don't know i don't know and that's how we get that's where these motherfuckers are from well see here's the thing lobo said he was the last one he's been saying it for decades like ever since lobo became lobo ever was in a first comic book he said he's the last of his kind either they got killed off or he killed them one or the other so how the or fuck is, there, is this something where where Brainiac took one of the cities back in the day? If, if, it, if that is a thing, that is a retcon. Okay, maybe that's the thing. May, and that would and that makes sense if that happened. But up until this point, Lobo was always saying that he killed. Basically, he was the last Zarn. That's what he was saying. Yeah, so it's a yeah, whole yeah. bunch of Zarn. It's a whole bunch of his planet people from Zarn, and they're here fucking up shit. The super people are fucking up shit. Everybody's wrecking. Lois Lane, like y'all know the drill. Come on, y'all know the drill. Do do. Eg- execute a or whatever like that every time a super war starts and shit like that oh uh, and while they're fighting still still basically saying i'm trying to call people i'm trying to call the just league and shit like that i can't get anything out of the city like nobody we're just here you know like that while they're fighting more lobos are like yeah you bust stitches you know they're saying the bastages all this, the bastages <laughs> all this shit like that and, and they're just shocked like that where the fuck are their lobos i thought lobo was the only lobo where are these people coming from so yeah and that's when superman's just like i know who's behind this brainiac and that's so what you're saying eli makes a whole lot more sense and if there's a retcon because I'm that's what i yeah. that's what that's ringing a bell because that like i said last time like when I remember when they teased Brainiac, it, I think he 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 had had something to do with Lobo. So I'm wondering if that's what it was. If he had so a, a shrunken Lobo stole, city, he stole his city. Okay, that yeah. that makes sense. I'm cool with that. Word. Even though that is a a retcon decades after Lobo was created. Um, whatever. Let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Superman fight a bunch of Lobo. So well, yeah. didn't Lobo have a daughter like? During the new fifty two and shit, that was a new fifty. Well, well, his daughter's Lex <laughs> Luthor's daughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's who's in Lex Luthor's house right now. But anyway, oh, and then he's like, "Okay, excellent, General uh, General Chikal, execute phase two. Phase two. Whoever Chikal We're- is. All right, so uh, we go to it, and like I said, they, I think they're going through Bibo's place, Ace of Clubs. I think it's Ace of Clubs. I think so. Okay. Anyway, so like, where? Oh no, they're super core. They're super core, and everybody's blaming Luthor for this shit. Like Luther, what the fuck? What did you do this time, Luther? Like I didn't, I didn't do this shit. I don't know what the fuck going on. I don't even think more than you do. Uh, and that's when uh, she like I know you behind this shit. And that's when like Luther's AI goes on board. He like, sorry, Luther, you've already lost. And he and they were like, what's going on with LL01? Like, what's wrong with your your AI, Luther? Luther's like, I don't know what the fuck that. I've never seen that thing before. And I'm just like, what the fuck? 
because that thing has been in Josh Williams's run since his run started. And the thing has been like talking to, it's been running Super Corp. It's been oh, talking that hologram man. thing? That hologram that thing has been there since yeah. the first issue. Yeah. So, and everybody just assumed Lex Luthor built that thing. So oh, so Lex Brainiac Luthor, like, built that. Brainiac built it. Lex yeah. Luthor never seen that thing before. They're like, yeah. what the fuck? You know, and that's when it starts okay. getting overwritten by Brainiac. So Brainiac built that thing the whole time. And he's been the one, basically, he's been in control of Supercourt the whole time. Not Lex Luthor, not Superman, Brainiac. This applies oh, to it. Shit. So it's yeah. like, what are you doing? Dun, 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 dun. It's supposed to be like, dun, dun, dun. you know, it's supposed to be like a big shocking thing right there. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's when he's just like, okay. And he sends some more Lobos in to kill Lex Luthor. He's like, okay. Uh, and they blast them. And I, and I think they take uh, Lena or Mercy or both. They take both of them and they snatch her. And, yeah, and bottling like, everybody up. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. Like that bottle image, I think that's a new thing. They want you to know they're being bottled, you know. Visual, yeah. visual image. So yeah, yeah. Like well, a, it looks like, like a water bottle. It like looks like a water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> right. But visually, you get it. You understand. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I like that. I like that. And baby, it's just saying, Luke kill Luthor. And then basically, the Lobos run at him, and Luke's like, "Well, I was trying to say this for rainy day. I was trying to use it for kill Superman, but I take you guys out." So basically, he basically gets like a a a light green lantern Lex Luthor armor thing. The Dune shield suits. The Dune, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Now you're making Dune references. <laughs> uh, but it only lasts for 10 seconds. So you got 10 seconds to take these guys out. So he crashed one through the window while it's falling. And he's basically like telling Superman, Superman, they're like, Luthor, what did you do this time? He's like, Superman, I didn't do this shit. <laughs> but I know who's doing it. He's like, tell me. So he lands. He's like, look, bring behind this. And he's like, so what did you do? He was like, look, I just find him. Brainiac is here somewhere. You got to find him while they blast him. And basically, uh, Supergirl gets snatched up. All the Super family gets snatched up. Everybody gets snatched up left and right. You're like, Superman, what the fuck? So Superman is like, and then he gets captured by the Lobos. And then that's when General Chikau shows up, you know. Uh, oh, and then right before uh, Jimmy Olsen gets killed by one of the Lo Lobos, he flashes with a camera and blinds him. You know, and while he recovers, that's when Silver Banshee, bam, blasts one of the Lobos away. Uh, and she gets snatched up. So, yeah, so all, and they get snatched up. Uh, and Superman realizes what's going on. Striker Island gets hit, and all of his supervillains get snatched up. So, basically, what, uh, what uh, Brainiac's doing, Superwoman, all of it. So, any, any metahuman in Metropolis and Kryptonian get snatched up. He's stealing them. But mm -hmm. less Superman. So Superman is fighting and he gets his ass kicked by the Lobos because there's too many of them. And that's when General Chakal shows up and he's looking at you. Oh, I heard. Oh, is this a, what they call a Kryptonian? I've heard of you. And then he gets blasted. He's like, oh, yeah. Did I hear something about you? You kicked my cousin's Lobo ass. I, I figured he was weak <laughs> as fuck. So, yeah. So he's ready to take it. He's ready to just beat his ass. And he's like, okay, we got everything. Let's go. He's like, well, it's time for us to go back to the ship, to the mothership. And Superman's like, cool, that's all I need to know. And there's because they thought Superman was weak as fuck. They're like, wait, wait, he's stronger than that. So he just breaks out of their grip like it's nothing and just kick a shot at him. And he was like, okay, Chakal, take me to where we Yeah, he was go. like biding his time. He's just like yeah, to get I, I, he yeah. made them think they thought he was weak as fuck. Like, nah, he could have broke out shit anytime he wanted to, but he didn't know what Brainiac's ship was. So now they get teleported, and uh, and right before he zaps Superman, Luther shows up. Luther grabs, he was like, Superman save us and they get teleported to Brainiac's ship so he knows Brainiac is low, close by but he's been invisible he couldn't see him so right before he sees Brainiac's ship gets gets out of there it teleports to God knows where so he goes back to the planet sits there to think he he can visualize everything that's going on he sees uh people crying Jimmy crying he sees the steel because the steels don't have power so why would Brainiac take them so yeah, yeah. And that's what, yeah, yes, so that's what Lois is like. Superman, they took the kids, and they look around. She's like, Clark, they took the kids. So, you know, they made, they made sure nobody was there first, you know. And Lois is a like, brainiac, and that's when he realized that there's one person that knows where they are, Lobo. Lobo, yeah. So you gotta find Lobo. So that's when, and that's when we get the the Council of Brainiacs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, <laughs> but I'm starting to recognize all of them because the one on the right, that's the one from the Superman cartoon in the 90s, from the Just League cartoon. That's uh -huh. him. That's the one from the Silver Age. The one in the back is like all these are Lobos. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Brainiacs that's already been a thing. So, yes, this is technically the Council of Lobos. So, yeah. So, basically, what Lobos' plan was is that 
he wants to instead of bottle cities bottle super people and share that knowledge with the other brainiacs of the of the multiverse oh shit the house of brainiac so yeah the house of brainiac yeah yeah and the next issue they say the last sons team up so superman has to find lobo team up with lobo to save his family and Lex yeah. Luthor. but yeah <laughs> cool so best of book yeah so honestly i'm into the I, I, honestly jason aaron's thing i was kind of let down but I, I was expecting a little bit more punch to it because jason aaron i know what he can do but joshua williamson it came out the gate swinging with this one so, yeah i mean this is like i'm probably gonna jump back on superman because i was like i was in the super i was into the tom taylor shit i, yeah. I dropped off a joshua williams superman run a, like a while ago yeah but um but yeah i think i'm on board again this seems like like almost like a summer event right now. That doesn't feel like <laughs> doesn't summer feel- is coming up so yeah so and and yeah. Yeah, like i said it's action and it's going to be in superman next week or, or whenever yeah. it comes out next week so it's, yeah. it's bouncing back and forth and josh williamson being Joshua Williamson, writing every damn thing in the DC. So, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. hey, if, if you give me this, I, I, can you really complain? I mean, no, I thought, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I saw thought... Yeah. Yeah, I think you went out. <laughs> so, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Superman's back, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else we got? Any Anything else you got? Or No, that's it. I read this. I read... Transformers, Hulk. Mm-hmm. What else did I read? Oh, the Wolverine. I already mentioned that. You know, the mm-hmm. Sabretooth War still going on. Laura, like, shredded one of the Sabretooth clones. That was pretty cool. But other than that, what else? Is that it? What else did I read? Oh, Earth Divers. Earth oh, Divers. I saw that. Me. I saw that. I knew you were going to read it, but you uh, didn't read sure. it. I did read it. Yeah, that was pretty okay. cool. That came. Yeah, I think that's the final issue of that arc, of the okay. 1776 arc, where, uh, yeah, um, they try to, the natives change history, go back in time, change history. Pretty cool. I'm kind of drawing a blank on what happened now, right now. <laughs> it'll, come, it'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I read it the other day. It was I, Plus, I was reading the book and then Fallout, and yeah, so. But I do remember enjoying it, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. so but yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm booked out. I think that's all we got. I don't know if uh, this Geese and Comics recorded this week. I I looked for it. I couldn't find anything. Normally, Goma would post something if they did something. Because I really want to know what they said, what they want to know about Transformers. So yeah, like I said, they talk about the same stuff we talk about, but they go and more in depth to what we do. So yeah. Well, it would be a moment of destruction on their show because Gomer and was it AKA David? AK, AK, yes, AKA David, yes. They, they, and Adam. Can go, Adam and Normal. Adam, What's yeah. Adam Is it Norman? Adam oh, Normal? I can't, I can't. I can't remember the third guy. Sorry, I, if he, I don't remember who he was. But was his but name had, Adam had Normal? Had destruction show. Yeah, that. Yeah, where they did. Where they just uh, had a, co- a a whole podcast just on Transformers and, and GI the IDW and GI. Well, the, the the IDW universe, which was revolved around Transformers and GI Joe and shit. Yeah. And that was that so, was the show. That was it. And they went balls deep into it. Yeah. And since this whole Energon universe, the, uh, the image Energon universe with you know Transformers and Duke and Cobra Commander mm-hmm. and Void Rivals. Um, yeah, they've been Gomer calls it the the, the moment of destruction. <laughs> okay, he shrunk it down, so okay. Yeah, but damn, so. they, they should have recorded. I'm mad, I'm mad at them. I'm, I'm gonna send them an angry message. They should like, yeah, this I, is I pretty yeah, I mean, Soundwave becoming leader of the Decepticons is pretty big in my and like, like I said, I don't know if he's, that's ever happened before, but I thought that was pretty sweet. <laughs> now, notice I got so- excited when you started saying a Soundwave because I only had like a few Transformers toys. Soundwave was one of yeah. them. So yeah. yeah, and so yeah, and Soundwave was just had a cool. He was just cool. Like even though he turned into a tape deck. <laughs> right <laughs> you know like, he was just, with a he, tape deck you know yeah how do, what do you play with a tape but but the tapes turned into different monster like rumble and ravage and laser beak right. and buzzsaw and, like, like, and stuff like that and, yeah, yeah yeah they're like he was a spy but then he had the cool voice that's the thing is soundwave had a cool he sounded like a robot right because what know? i would do i would like you know the the oscillating fans that we used to have back in the 80s that don't exist anymore you know i would yeah. we all did it we all did it we talked to the oscillating fan Everything yeah. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually we, had, we all did it. We all did it. 
I had a Transformers voice changer. Like <laughs> Oh, okay. It had it was like a headphones with a microphone and then a little it looked like an Optimus Prime like Walkman and you put it on your belt and you just spoke into it and it and it sounded like yeah, you were speaking into the fan. <laughs> <laughs> now that you say that, I'm doing it next week. <laughs> I'm doing it. I still have my fan right here somewhere. I'm talking to it to record my stuff. This is Leroy. This is comic book bullies. <laughs> Mission. This is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, like I said, if you listen this long, definitely like, share, subscribe. If you listen longer than thirty seconds, we appreciate you. You have helped yeah. us in the algorithm. Uh, also, I finished the uh, the X Men Days Future Past comic thing. I finished that their comic review. It's on the page. If anybody want to look at it, check it out. We got some hits on it. Let's get that thing to five hundred. Let's get the thing out of five hundred before the end of the week. Oh, well, end of the I'll month. give it a share. Yeah, just get shared out. I'm pretty sure we're actually not too far away. Just put it out there. I'm gonna do some more work to get it up there. Uh, and then a week, like next week, I don't know what's gonna happen next. Week. Oh, oh, you know what happened next week? I think what happens next yeah. week? Uh, Rebel Moon Two. I oh, think that's shit. next week. I think that's next uh, week. We'll talk about it. The greatest well, movie yeah. ever made. <laughs> we'll talk about it next okay. week. Until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time, same bullet channel.